In my previous video, we discussed what is caching, how caching can help us speed up systems and the two popular ways of caching, write through and write ahead. In this video, we'll see how caching is being utilized by large scale systems such as YouTube or Facebook. Let's say we have been asked to design YouTube comment section system. It being a large system, we'll obviously have many servers. So here we have bunch of servers and we have decided every server to cache video comments in its memory. And then we have clients that communicate with these servers and for reading comments, they just read from the caches of their respective servers. Let's assume that our first client, which is client one, has posted a comment on the video. Now when client two goes to the video, the client to server goes to the database first, fetches all the comments and stores them in its cache. Some time elapses and now the user behind client one decides to go back and edit their comment. Now when client two goes back to the video, the client to server doesn't go to the database because it already populated the information in its cache. So it just goes to the cache, sees the old version of the comment from client one, and it is simply not aware of the last edited comment made by client one. So basically the user behind client two might end up responding to an old or outdated comment made by client one. This is really bad for product and user experience point of view. You don't want people to responding to older or stale version of comments. It teaches us that caches can become stale if they are not being updated properly. So here the way we have designed the system is really bad for YouTube comments because we'll often be dealing with caches with stale data. A better solution here would be to use single cache, which can be used by all servers, such as Redis. So now all the servers will hit the same cache and we'll have single source of truth for caching mechanism. However, for certain features in the system, we might not care much about cache data staleness. For example, accurate and up-to-date YouTube view count is not really necessary and important information. So if certain user sees a stale version of view count of a YouTube video for a while, it's not going to cause any disruption. These are the kind of trade-offs one needs to think about while designing systems. If you are in an interview, these are the kind of things one must ask their interviewer. That is, what are the requirements? Do we care about accuracy of data? If we do, for things like post, we might not be able to use caching in a naive way. But if it is something like view counts where accuracy is not that important, we can get away by building caching in a naive way like we had done originally. As you can see, caching can be powerful, but has also got some pitfalls. In general, if you are dealing with static or immutable data, caching is awesome and can be designed easily. But when data is constantly changing, things can be trickier because you will have to deal with two different locations where data exists, and you need to keep them in sync in an efficient manner to avoid stale data, because depending upon the use case, that might not be good. To summarize, you should definitely consider caching when dealing with static or immutable data. You should consider using caching if you have a single entity reading or writing data. If you don't care about consistency or staleness of data, you should consider caching. Otherwise, you should design a system where you can properly invalidate or get rid of stale data in your cache in a distributed manner by using something like Redis. Which brings us to the concept of cache eviction policy. As you can imagine, we don't have infinite space in our cache. It cannot be as big as the database. And also, we don't want any stale data in our cache. Cache eviction policy is used to get rid of data in our caches and there are two popular choices. LRU or least recently used means you get rid of that least recently used data in the cache and you have some way of recording which is least recently used. Because the piece of data that was used least recently, we probably no longer care about it or least care about it. There is also the LFU or least frequently used policy where you get rid of least frequently used data. You can also get rid of data in last in first out or first in first out basis, or even just randomly. The point is there are a lot of ways to evade caches and the policy you want will most often depend upon the use case of the system you're designing. This is caching for you in a nutshell. And if you have found this video informative, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing.